This is a new Lamborghini Huracan STO, and it's the craziest Huracan yet, and one of the craziest modern Lamborghinis, period. This is essentially a Huracan on steroids. It really looks like that, and it's a track-focused model designed for maximum performance. Today, I'm going to review the Huracan STO and show you all of its quirks and features. Before I get started, be sure to check out Cars and Bids, which is my enthusiast car auction website for cool cars from the modern era with free listings. You can list your cool car for free and auction it on Cars and Bids. And we've had some fantastic sales lately, including this Spiker C8, which sold for a record price $373,000. This wonderful Ferrari F430 Spider converted to a gated manual transmission that brought $134,000, and this great Mercedes AMG GT63 four-door, which sold for just under $140,000. If you're looking to buy or sell cool enthusiast cars from the modern era, the 1980s and up, Cars and Bids is the place to do it. With daily auctions and great selection, check it out, carsandbids.com. All right, time for the quirks and features of the STO, and I'm gonna start with those letters. S-T-O stands for Super Trofeo Homologato. Now, homologato means homologated, which is a car industry term that describes a road version of a race car that an automaker was required to make in order to compete in a race series. That car is said to be homologated, the road version of it. But this car, the Huracan, doesn't compete in any race series, except for Lamborghini's own Super Trofeo series, where they set the rules. They don't require a homologation car, so this isn't that. It's not actually an homologato, but it sounds cool, so that's why they call it that. But beyond just sounding cool, this thing also looks pretty damn cool. You can see this is no ordinary Huracan, and that's obvious from the moment you first take a look. Basically, every panel is changed, updated, different. The car is wider, more aggressive, more angry. Frankly, I think it looks awesome. I mean, totally over-the-top ridiculous, but that's what you want from a Lamborghini supercar, and this absolutely delivers in its absurdity and crazy overstyling, just like the buyers will want. But let's talk specifically about some of the more ridiculous exterior touches on this car. One is the roof scoop, which is becoming more common on exotic cars, supercars, over the cabin, brings air into the engine, and it just looks cool. Now, coming back from that roof scoop, you have a giant carbon fiber fin, like a shark fin, sticking up out of the back of this car. And behind that, you have a massive rear wing. Absolutely huge carbon fiber wing. Regular Huracan doesn't have anything like this, but this provides almost a thousand extra pounds of downforce to keep this car on the ground. Probably the most interesting quirk of the rear wing, it's adjustable and it actually shows the current adjustment on this little window on the wing. So when you tilt it, it'll say, I guess, low, medium, and high. You can see right now it's in medium, and that setting is displayed right there on the wing itself in case you bump into an STO at Cars and Coffee or on the racetrack, and you want to see where that person is set their wing. And in addition to these unusual things in the back of the car, also worth pointing out, another exterior design quirk is the sheer number of intakes and holes. You got in the front a giant hole for air, you got nostrils ahead of the windshield, you got these inlets above the front tires, as you can see, air vents behind the doors, and then more on these rear fenders to bring more air in. You got a bunch of cutouts above the engine for heat dissipation, the roof scoop I already mentioned, and then a crazy amount of bodywork and some openings in the back. You just have an enormous amount of vents and inlets and scoops and holes on the outside of this car. But while all of those exterior quirks are certainly interesting, the most unusual thing on the outside of the STO is the removable panels. <laughs> yes, that's right. Check this out. So in a regular Huracan, if you want to open up the front trunk, you can press a button on the key fob or a button in the interior and it'll pop open. This car, you'll notice, 
there's no button on the key fob for the front trunk. You have a blank there, and strangely enough, it's pressable. You can push it, the light flashes, but that's not actually a button and it doesn't do anything. That's because the STO doesn't have a traditional Huracan front trunk. Instead, it has a Kofango. This is a fake word that Lamborghini has made up by combining the Italian word for hood, which is Cofano, with the word for fender, which is parafango. Hood and fender, it's all one piece, and it's called the Cofango. And to open it, you need to use a special key. To access this key, you look into the driver's footwell, where you would normally see a front trunk or engine release, and there's a red cord dangling down. Pull it out, and this is your special key. So, to use this key, you walk up to one side of the Cofango, and you put it into this little keyhole, twist it from lock to unlock, and then it's unlocked. Go over to the other side, do the same thing, it's unlocked, and then you have to push down on this locking mechanism, and it pops up to open the Cofango. You do that on the other side, and then you're in. You can lift it up, and you have access to your front cargo area, very different than a standard Huracan with a simple push button. Now, once you have the Cofango opened, you can see there is a little storage compartment up here, but it's very little. And that's because the heat extractors that take air out of the radiator are taking up most of the space that the regular Huracan has for a cargo area. In the STO, these vents were deemed more important than extra cargo, which I guess makes sense as this is the high performance track model that can be really using it for practical duties. The other interesting thing to notice about the Cofango is there's a prop. Like like a prop to keep it open like you'd find on a car hood, even though it flips all the way forward and is suspended there by wires. The prop here is used for a totally different purpose than any other car. It's to keep the Cofango from blowing down in the wind once you have it open. So if wind pushes on it, you can see the prop would stop it from blowing closed or potentially getting blown out of alignment and screwing things up. And that's why you have your Cofango prop. But then again, this car isn't really about practicality. I spent all this time showing you that front compartment, even though nobody's ever really going to use it. More important is the performance, and it is significant. Back here, you have a V10, just like the standard Huracan, except here it's tuned for more power. 630 horsepower in the STO versus around 600 in the standard model. And there are a lot more upgrades than that. One is weight savings. Lamborghini says 75% of the body panels on the STO or carbon fiber, and that plus other weight savings measures contributes to an overall curb weight of around 3,300 pounds. Still pretty heavy, but lighter than the regular car. Also worth pointing out, the STO is rear wheel drive, not all wheel drive like the standard Huracan, which definitely makes it more exciting. And there are significant upgrades elsewhere as well. For one thing, the brakes, you got better brakes and larger ones compared to the standard car, improved suspension as well, stiffer, they could go around corners better. You have rear wheel steering and improved aero with all these hoops and scoops and vents. Basically, everything that Lamborghini could think of in order to improve this car, they did. Now, I'm sitting back here talking about performance, and I want to show you the engine, but that's not exactly easy to do, because the engine cover is a lot like the Cofango. It's a bit tricky to get open. You don't have just a standard latch. You pull, and then it pops open, whatever. You got to get that key again. You go up to the engine cover on one side. You can twist the key from lock to unlock. You go to the other side, same deal, lock to unlock, and then you push down on the lock mechanisms, just like you did up front, and then from there, you can lift the engine cover a bit, but it's still latched in place. On the passenger side, the latch is like spring-loaded, and you can push it to the side and open the engine cover, except it doesn't just open, it completely comes off. There's no hinges here, like in a standard engine cover, to lift it up. You have to remove it completely from the car, and only then can you see the glorious engine. This Lamborghini V10, one of the last 10-cylinder engines still around, beautiful gold under the hood, which matches some of this car's trim and just looks awesome. And like I said, 630 horsepower. This is a serious engine, although most STO owners may never get to see it. However, they will hear it. And this engine sounds fantastic in this car. Take a listen to a couple of revs from the STO. Bye. 
But as you can imagine, the STO doesn't come cheap. This car has a starting base price of around $330,000, but this one has been equipped to around $415,000. So it has a lot of options, but they all do. 400 to 450 seems to be a pretty standard window where these are all coming in for their sticker price. So what options are added to make it so expensive. Well, for one, you got the paint color, which is $17,000. And then a lot of exterior carbon fiber, that adds another $21,000. But my very favorite thing on the window sticker is where it says Lamborghini writing on. And then it makes a list of various things where Lamborghini writing has been added, and then some additional costs. Like for example, the seats, the steering wheel, the center tunnel, the upper console, all of that has Lamborghini writing and they charge more for it. The funny thing about this though, if you look closely at the window sticker, you'll see all of those lines have a cost, but even the line that says Lamborghini writing on has a cost, even though that's not even a thing. That's just like prep to say where the writing is, but they still charge just for Lamborghini writing on, even though it's not on something. They're just throwing out random costs for this car and the people who buy these are paying them. But anyway, next we move inside the STO, where there are some changes compared to a standard Huracan, but not as many as on the outside. Now, this is the fourth Huracan model I've reviewed. I did the standard model years ago, then the Performante, then the Evo, and now this. So the interior, not really all that changed. I'm not going to spend too much time on it, but a few things worth discussing. For one, the door panel, now completely carbon fiber, and you have a little red loop you can use to open the door. You pull this, it unlatches, and that's how you get out to close close the door, you have this black fabric loop lined with carbon fiber. You pull on that and that closes the door. Now inside, you get a lot of Alcantara in the STO. The steering wheel is full Alcantara, as you can see, and the dashboard is also full Alcantara. Plus, you got Alcantara on the seats, the center console, a lot of other places, but you're probably wondering about the seats. So is that gold leather that you just saw? Yes, it is. This car, this particular STO, has gold leather trim on the seats, which isn't something you're gonna see very often. Sort of a New Jersey diner in an overstuffed booth. <laughs> You don't really usually see metallic colored leather, but that's what you have here. Although the rest of the seat, as you can see, is Alcantara. But anyway, next up, speaking of the seats, moving them, these are not power operated seats. They're all manual adjustment. And most interesting, moving forward or backward requires you pulling this silver lever at the front of the seats, you can see, and then throwing your weight forward or backwards and that moves the seats. Not exactly luxury, but this isn't a luxury car, it's a performance one. Also interesting, the floor mats are not floor mats, they're aluminum, which you don't see too often, but that's what you have here. As for drive modes. At the base of the steering wheel, you can see the three drive modes and the little switch you use to go between them. Now, the bottom one, Piogia, that's the wet drive mode, but the other two are STO and Trofeo. Interestingly, STO is the least aggressive of the two, despite the fact that this is called the STO. Trofeo, the race mode, is more exciting. Now, also cool in this vicinity is the gauge cluster, which is almost like permanently in race mode. You can see it's displaying the gear very large in the center, and then it has the RPMs and an arc along the top. It looks very cool. I also like some other neat touches here. You have the G-forces on the bottom, sort of permanently there, and constantly updating to show you exactly what Gs you're pulling at any given second. On the left, you have this top-down view of the STO. When you open a door, it shows that, but I love that they specifically made it an STO, and you can tell with the different bodywork. That's kind of cool attention to detail. I also love in this gauge cluster, they didn't bother to translate from Italian the fuel gauge and the temperature gauge. They just left that in Italian because Italian is a beautiful language and maybe also because they're lazy. Now, other interesting items in here. Starting this car is the same as a regular Huracan, which means you lift up this red lid in the center and then you press this center start stop button. Or if you don't want to do that every time, you can just put your finger through the lid. There's a hole 
pull and then press start stop. Getting this car into drive is as simple as pulling the paddle on the right. That's the upshift paddle and you can use it to go from neutral to first gear or drive. Going into reverse is more interesting. There's this odd like lever here in the center. You pull it up and that engages reverse. A little more drama than you need, but that's how it works. Also in the center here, a couple other things worth noting. I love the toggle switches along the top. You can use those for like the axle lift, the power windows, the hazard lights, that stuff. A couple weird things here. For one, the power windows are backwards so you pull them toward you you pull them down and the window goes up you push it forward or up and the window goes down which seems strange also interesting you have a blank toggle switch which you'd think would be expensive to manufacture that's where the parking sensors are on a regular Huracan this car the race version doesn't have or need parking sensors so you just have a blank toggle you can't push it it's just there kind of funny also worth pointing out in the center you have a large screen here as you can see this infotainment system is in other Huracan models and it's getting kind of old nothing particularly interesting here not really all that great it's relatively responsive it does what you want but it doesn't have any like cool surprises or fun tricks it just kind of has the basics and that's about it but that's probably about what you expect from a supercar now one thing worth noting when you go into reverse the backup camera appears in the gauge cluster screen it's not the highest resolution but it's cool to see it there kind of right in the driver's line of sight which makes it easier to see rather than looking into the center screen it's right there in front of you all right driving the Huracan STO Now, a quick note before I get started. Uh, thank you to Elite Finish here in San Diego. It's a detailing shop, paint protection film, all sorts of stuff for providing me with this car. I use Elite Finish for all of my vehicles, everything I need done. And if you're in San Diego and you need some car cosmetic work, they are the place. So let's talk STO. Starting with just the way it sounds. Oh. And it is so fast, so incredibly fast. Now, this doesn't really surprise me all that much because I drove the Huracan Evo, I drove the Performante, and the regular Huracan, the power output's not that different between the three of them, frankly. Um, but this car is just such a damn thrill. Now, first off, I should mention, I love the Huracan just in general. I think it has some of the very sharpest, quickest steering in the entire car business, and it changes directions almost unbelievably fast. It was like a generation ahead of Ferrari, the Huracan versus like the F8, the 458. It really felt a generation ahead of Ferrari, frankly, with like just its incredible ability to handle, to steer. This car is even more focused. In addition to changing all the other stuff I mentioned, Lamborghini also changed the steering ratio in this car, gave it a more linear one. It's, God, it's amazing. It is so amazing how quickly a Huracan changes directions and how immediate the steering feels. And this car just feels so grippy. When I drive this car, I truly wonder how can performance cars get better? I'm a Ferrari guy over Lamborghini, generally speaking. I prefer most of the equivalent models. I prefer Ferrari, but this car, the Huracan, since it has come out, has just blown my mind. I think this is one of the greatest performance cars I've ever driven, and the STO turns things up just a little bit more. Now, it's important to point out, driving this car along on the street, you don't really notice the changes made were like small changes in a bunch of areas that add up to kind of a moderately large change. You don't really notice them driving it around. I don't notice the weight savings. I don't really notice the better brakes, etc. If you were on a racetrack, that would be the situation, but it's hard to notice around town. However, two things. Number one, most people are gonna drive the car this way. So that's just sort of a reality of it. You just, you don't really notice the changes, but you can brag about them at Cars and Coffee. But more importantly, I think that just speaks to how damn good the regular Huracan is. When I got in the 48 Pista, you could tell. It was faster, it was sharper, it was better. This car is probably a little bit better than the regular Huracan in some ways, but I'm sitting in here thinking, the regular Huracan is already so amazing. This car improves upon it. How do you improve upon it from here? I just think the Huracan is such an amazing, highly credible, just fantastic performance car. Now, there are some drawbacks to this car, it should be made clear. One, you can see from your angle, very obviously, rear visibility sucks. It's no better from my angle looking out the mirror. Those slats back there, you can they're technically like horizontal, you can see through them, but not well. 
it is very hard to see what's behind you. The mirrors are large and that helps, but it doesn't help, you know, that much. The car is also rougher than a standard Huracan. That much is clearly true. You're in, first off, you're sitting in manual seats, but also these like pretty hefty carbon fiber bucket seats. They're tight. They're not like luxury, comfortable seats. You also just have less of everything. There's less sound deadening. You can hear more. Now, that's a great thing if you're driving for performance. Not so great if you're daily driving it, going to the theater in the evening. The front trunk situation is just abhorrent. I mean, it's not realistic if you actually wanna use the car for any practical purpose. Most people won't, but it's bad. And also the look and cost of this car are just extravagant. It's unbelievably expensive, it looks unbelievably expensive, so you gotta be okay with that. But with that said, this is just so damn good. The transmission is unbelievably quick and seamless, being this dual clutch automatic. The uh, steering and handling is so mind-blowingly sharp in Huracans. I love driving this car. I love looking at this car. I love being in this car. I would never own one of these. It is way too over the top for me. I don't think I could ever pull it off, but I will be jealous forever whenever I see one of these on the street. It is just so cool and so special and so exciting, and it's an amazing, amazing car to drive. And so that's the Lamborghini Huracan STO. This thing is crazy and it's my favorite version of the Huracan yet. And it's a fantastic upgrade to an already great vehicle. Yes, the STO is rough riding, incredibly expensive and ridiculously in your face, but it's a spectacular car, fun to drive and ridiculous to look at like a supercar should be. And I'm thrilled that I had the chance to review it. And now now it's time to give the Huracan STO a Doug score. And the Doug score is here, 70 out of 100, which places the Huracan STO here against a bunch of relevant cars. The STO actually loses to the Huracan Evo Spider here, but if you look a little closer, it makes sense. The STO wins in the weekend categories where it shines, but it loses overall as it's not a particularly well-rounded car. And indeed, that's exactly how I'd describe the STO. Amazingly fun, but not well-rounded at all. If you want the ultimate Huracan, this is it, but it's definitely not a daily driver.